and welcome back. Our guest tonight is Dr. Katherine Albrecht. She's here in the city of Austin to share a key victory she had actually in the city of San Antonio and also give us some new breaking news on StarPage.com. She joins us now in studio. And thank you for joining us, Doctor. Well, thank you, Chikari. It's great to be here. Yes. All right. Now, I like Miss Albrecht. She's, uh, or Mrs., I should say. She's a very lovely woman. She has a great persona, but she's here to talk about some rather serious things. So first of all, Miss Albrecht, tell us why you're in the city of Austin today. Well, I'm actually here to celebrate some good news for a change, and that's always wonderful when that happens. We scored a huge victory this week that the chipping program where they had those microchips on tags around the kids' necks, the pilot tracking program down in San Antonio, Texas, yes. has officially been scrapped. Yes, so high five to everybody out there who fought to make that happen. Uh, we were super excited to hear that they dropped the program. They cited everything from public opposition to poor publicity to the fact that it cost money and didn't do what they had hoped it would do. So you're saying it's been completely scrapped? It has been scrapped. So when those kids go back to school this fall, exactly as we requested of the school board and the administration and everyone else we've spoken to, they're uh, doing what we asked, and there will be no chips around those kids' necks this fall. That is great, because I actually had a chance to go down to San Antonio, uh, I guess it was the end of last year, and it was a, uh, a rally at a school board meeting, I believe it was, and, you know, we had all the, the school board people up there, and they had a chance for the people to speak. You know, people came out for the spy chips, but I believe they only allowed five people to talk for two minutes each or something along those lines, and the room was full of people who were against this program for various reasons, for privacy reasons, for health reasons, and you can see some of the, uh, the footage right there on your screen. But it is exciting to see this has uh, been thrown out. You know, the whole community really opposed it, and of course, um, Andrea Hernandez, the yes. now 16, she was 15 last year, but the 15-year-old honor student who just put her foot down and said, I do not want to wear a tracking badge around my neck. And, you know, she stood firm, as, as you know, she was expelled mm -hmm. from her school. And I believe there's now some talk about her actually going back to the school. So we yeah, want to say great. congratulations. I'm here to congratulate Andrea, here to congratulate the entire state of Texas, really, because mm -hmm. this sets a precedent for the rest of the state. And before we get a little too carried away with our victory, there are some other programs going into place. We know that Carroll, Texas is now looking at RFID or GPS tracking badges for their teachers. Uh, other school districts around the country were looking at San Antonio and saying, oh, well, it's such a success there. Maybe we ought to try it here. We know that the vendors of these programs have approached uh, schools all over the country trying to pitch these programs to them. So we're hoping that with this one setback for the industry, that will maybe send a message to those other schools. And if they don't, then we'll do the same thing. We'll go out and we'll do protests and we'll do community forums and we will petition and, and provide them with all the information they need to decide not to do it. And speaking of that information, Ms. Albrecht, you know, people may be out there and say, you know, what's the big deal about these kids having these tracking devices? You know, I want my child to be tracked. You know, what's, what's the big deal? What would you say to somebody like that? Well, the, I, I think the worst possible thing that you can do if you have a valuable resource is to put a big beacon on it and tell everybody that it's there. Mm. So if you want to keep your children safe, what you need to realize is that the predators will be the very first people to get on board that technology. And in fact, uh, when I went out and I interviewed kids at the school, and I, I spent a lot of time in San Antonio, I actually spoke with a man who counsels sex offenders. Mm -hmm. And he said that he was actually quite concerned that because this technology can't be turned off, these tags can be read from 300 feet through somebody's, you know, if a, if a child's in their bedroom and they have this tag in their backpack, it's possible to drive down the street and determine where the children are, when they're home. Mm -hmm. You can't turn it off. It's on 24 hours a day. It'd be easy to track a pattern. You know, they go from school to the bus to wherever else. It will not only track a pattern, but what it lets you do is see through walls. So if, if a predator has staked out a particular child, and that's typically what they do, mm -hmm. then they would be able to tell if the, if the child was home or not. They would be able to, you know, watch the driveway and see if the parents left when the tag, the, the tag signal was still emanating from the home and know if a child was alone or if a child took um, a, a different path through an alleyway or, you know, some place that they wouldn't, be there where there wouldn't be other people around so right. it, it creates a real potential for that and then I actually interviewed a man who has turned over a new leaf but he spent a number of years in jail for that kind of crime mm. and he actually told me on camera that when he was offending he would have used this technology wow. to stalk his victims that's powerful stuff so you know parents we need to think carefully about what seems like it's safe but really creates greater danger for 
you know, the children in our care. And I think the main thing to keep kids safe, you, you keep an eye on them. You get to know them. You, 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 the teachers need to know the names of the kids in their classroom. And, you know, parents need to be more involved in the community. But the, the, you don't want to abdicate that to an electronic tracking device because it'll backfire. Exactly. Now, if somebody's out there and they're saying, you know, Miss Albrecht, they're trying to do this at my school or in my town, what would you say, you know, what advice can you give them? What resources can you give somebody? Well, I, I would encourage them to contact me because we've had uh, tremendous success in the last 10 years of stopping RFID implementation. And my website, just my name, KatherineAlbrecht.com, I'm pretty easy to find, or KMA at SpyChips.com is my email. I would, anybody who hears about a program like this going into their school, we'd, we'd definitely want to hear from them. Um, we have managed uh, to stop a lot of things, and, and one, I think probably the main one, is our antichips.com website, which um, shows how we stop the chipping of human beings, and by that I mean the implantation of human beings. Mm -hmm. So back in 2007, the uh, Verichip Corporation, you know, it's gone by many different names, Digital Angel, Verichip, Applied Digital, Digital Solutions, Angel, but you yeah, know the one, yeah. right? The, the, the implant that they said, oh, it'll be the next greatest thing for you know, diabetics, and, and if you're ever in a coma, they can ID you. And they were implanting it into people. Blue Cross Blue Shield was running a trial where they were implanting these into diabetic patients. We had um, Tommy Thompson, former candidate for, for president. He was the head of the FDA when the FDA approved the device, actually for medical implantation. Mm -hmm. um, he then stepped down from the FDA and took a position on their board of directors for a whole lot of stock. So talk about conflict of interest. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had a program happening in West Palm Beach, Florida, which you can see at antichips.com, our big protest about that, where uh, they were chipping Alzheimer's patients. And talk about a population that can't say no. Yes, you exactly. Know, yeah. If you have Alzheimer's, y you can't consent. You, you can't give meaningful medical consent to something mm -hmm. like that being done to you. So it, it was looking pretty bleak. And in fact, the Verichip Corporation stock was trading at over $10 a share. And it was like the sky was the limit. And we discovered um, that, that these microchips had caused cancer in laboratory animals. That when you put this into an, uh, an animal in a laboratory, between 1 and 10% of them develop fast-growing malignant cancerous tumors around the microchip. And when we revealed that story through the Associated Press, all of those programs went poof. They all went away. And the best part was we watched the value of the stock of that company go from over $10 a share to, I think it was like 24 cents a share. Okay. Yeah. They were delisted from the stock exchange, and that was the end of that company. And so that's why we're not hearing a lot about human chipping right now. They removed the chips from the, um, from the Alzheimer's patients. They removed the chips from the diabetics. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, no one is promoting human chipping right now. Yeah, and we've seen that, I believe it was in Europe. Uh, it, they had some real trendy club where the way to get in was you had a chip. Baja Beach Club. Yeah, yes. oh, so you're yeah. familiar with this. Yeah, in yes. fact, I went to the Baja Beach Club in Rotterdam, uh, the Netherlands, in Holland. And when we got there, and again, it was one of these things where they hyped it up and mm. made it seem like a big deal. But when we got there, they, they had to dust off an old PC that hadn't been plugged in in a year to try <laughs> to fire up the system because it was really a publicity trick. Yeah. So here they were you know, leading you to think that the entire club was filled with chipped patrons, but the reality was they couldn't even, they, they had to go get, they had to send somebody out to the store for batteries for the reader because wow. it had sat in a drawer for so long. So that one also um, went away. And once you actually see these malignant tumors, and, and uh, there's another website I'd like to refer people to, which is chipmenot.com, where we talk about all the animals that have developed tumors. And mm -hmm. at Chip Me Not, you can see dogs that have died, bled to death from these chips. And some of these uh, kennels and so forth, it's standard procedure to chip the dogs and the cats. It is. And in fact, uh, I tried not too long ago to adopt a cat from a shelter. And and the, the cats are not chipped because it, it's horrifying, but they euthanize them and they don't want to waste a chip. Oh, wow. So if they don't get adopted, they, they don't want to bother chipping them. And I said, this is a lovely cat. I would love to take this cat home. I, is she chipped? And they said, well, no, she isn't. But we'd have to chip her before we gave her to you. And I said, well, I don't want a chipped cat, but I'd like to adopt this cat. And if I don't adopt it, you, you know, the, cat may, the, cat, yeah. the cat's going to die. I said, would you rather this cat die? Then me get a cat without a chip? And the woman looked me right in the eye and she said, yes. Wow. And I went, okay. They have procedures. So the, the agenda is, is not about saving animals. The agenda is about here's Tracking. the rules and follow the rules and, and we want to implement this technology and we want people to accept it whether they want to or not. And that's why, bringing it back again to why I'm here in, in Austin, 
I'm so excited that we've scored yet another victory on, on the chipping of the kids in San Antonio because it really is. People stand up. You get the information about it. This is dangerous and uh, all the downsides of it. And when people stand up, I'll tell you, these guys wilt. They wilt under pressure. Yeah, they, they want to be bullies. They don't want to get in a real toe-to-toe -to -toe fight. Because they're not, they don't have any courage. I mean, anybody exactly. who'd want to do that to children. You know, I look at what they did to Andrea. They expelled her from her school. Mm -hmm. They persecuted her. They made her go to a separate lunch line. Yeah. I mean, how much worse could it get? They didn't let her vote for homecoming queen. And she couldn't rent library books and uh, get football <laughs> tickets and so forth. I it mean, was completely ridiculous. It is. And you think about a 15-year-old girl. I mean, high school, your, your school and your friends are your life. Mm -hmm. They didn't care. They wanted her out of there. So, yeah. you know, and they didn't care how much she suffered. So it's, it's her day in the sun. It is her victory. We're very, very proud of what she's done. And uh, I, I want to say, anybody else want to do this? Bring it on, because I think we've got the public really opposed to this. All right. Now, I know you have other news, and we'll get to that in just one second, yeah. but you brought up the, the human chip, and not just uh, wearing a RFID tag, but right. having the chip in your skin. I know you're a deeply religious, spiritual person. Right. Uh, what are your thoughts about that on the religious aspect? My goodness. Um, the, the whole direction that all of this, I think, is going has, has a, a dark component to it. And whether you're a Christian, Muslim, Jew, whatever religion you are, when you think about where technology is going, I think you do get the sense of what Alex frequently refers to as like the total enslavement of humanity. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, got a, that's got a dark aspect to it, a spiritual aspect to it. And I don't think that that's accidental. I think that these technologies, the, the drones in our skies, the satellites watching us, the NSA surveilling all of our online activities, and everything right down to the smartphone that's tracking where you go and who mm -hmm. your contacts are, all of that, I think, is, is really putting a noose around all of our necks that at some point is going to be pulled. And as a Christian, I, um, I've, I've told this story many times when I was a little girl. Uh, my grandmother told me about the, the last book of the Bible, Revelation, where mm -hmm. there's a prophecy that talks about a time when all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, or enslaved or imprisoned. My grandmother took me aside and told me that there would be a time when people would not be able to buy or sell without a number on their right hand or their forehead. And at that time, back in the 1970s, I had never seen a computer because the computers took up entire city blocks. They mm. weren't little handheld devices. I'd never seen a credit card, believe it or not, because they weren't in use at that time in the wow. 1970s. Uh, I can't there was a thing called a time. diner's card, but that was about it. And only, you know, people we didn't know had them. Mm. I never knew anybody who had one. And even the cash registers, they weren't hooked up to the internet because there wasn't an internet. They weren't um, high-speed, ubiquitously networked computer systems like they are now. They were just a cash drawer with a calculator on the top, right. and you pushed a button and out. So for me, when my grandmother told me that you wouldn't be able to buy or sell without a number, I couldn't imagine how that would be possible. And, of course, she's referring to the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible. The mm -hmm. easy way to remember where this is is the last book of the Bible because it's about the end. Oh, right. And then you go to chapter 13, which is kind of an unlucky number. Mm -hmm. And then go to the very end of there. And verses 16 through 18 talk about a time when all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, or imprisoned or enslaved, mm -hmm. will be caused to have this mark on their right hand or their forehead. And without it, they won't be able to buy or sell. And to get the mark, they'll have to bow down and, and worship the political and religious power of that end time, which is truly the, the power of darkness. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's what we refer to as the beast of the end time. And the Bible is uh, extremely clear that the people who take the mark will have two punishments. There's a physical punishment. They'll actually have a noisome and grievous sore. And the word noisome means festering and hideous. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, when I looked at the pictures of those cancer, oh, yeah. those cancerous tumors around those microchips, which, by the way, you can see if you go to uh, chipmenot.com and click on some of the, the rat and mouse story. I mean, that's horrifying. And so the, it says that a noisome and grievous sore is, is um, the physical outcome. And then the spiritual outcome is to be forever within the wrath of God. And it talks about how, um, you know, their, the, the wrath of their torment, well, the smoke of the wrath of their torment rises forever. That doesn't sound good to me. No. So the, the, the Bible's pretty clear that the one thing you really want to not do is take that, that mark of the beast. Yeah. So I, at the age of, you know, eight or nine, when my grandmother told me this, I said, I can't imagine this ever going to happen in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. So I'll pass it on to my kids and their grandkids. will pass it on to their grandkids. And some year, someday, thousands of years when this happens, my descendants, my distant descendants, will know not to do it. And then there I was in uh, 1999, 
And I, my grandmother had long since passed away, and I'd kind of forgotten all about it. And then something started kind of making me remember, and it was the mobile speed pass. Do you oh, yes. A, you, you, the little number, and I was thinking, wait a minute, you can wave it. And then I looked, and I uh, did a little research, and I found that they had a wristband version of it, a, a wristwatch version. So you could just swipe your right hand and right. make a payment. And that's kind of how all of this, um, how all of this started unfolding for me, as I became very interested in the ways that people were buying and selling with numbers. That, of course, leads you into privacy invasion and databases and mm -hmm. recording of people's purchases. And then that, of course, leads you into political control and, and control of food and markets. Right. So it really is a, a big picture. And the way I like to describe it on, on my radio show is I, I refer to it as, you know, we're all working on different pieces. Some people are working on you know, Monsanto and genetically modified foods. Other people working on vaccine issues or, or working on um, you know, government control or the Federal Reserve. And it feels like we're all kind of doing our own little different things. Mm -hmm. But when you put it all together, what you begin to discover is all those things are spokes on a wheel. And they're all converging. They're all heading towards a central point of convergence. That's right. And when that convergence occurs, um, you can see it as a good thing or a bad thing. I see it as a very bad thing. There are other people who call it, uh, like Ray Kurzweil, calls it the singularity, singularity. right? right yeah. So the point at which everything comes together and humanity breaks free of this, this, this package flesh. of meat yeah. and becomes one with the machine. And we all just become bits and bytes and zeros and ones. And then we have a, a immortality. We never have to die. We upload our memories into the machine. Yeah, but you can't upload your soul. You can't. And I actually think that this whole Mark of the Beast thing, that that, that may be what it entails. Somehow to say, I surrender the essence of who I am into this board, this thing, mm -hmm. this thing. And, you know, I, I, I've talked often about, um, you know, the web, there's a, where there's a web, there's a spider hmm. or the net. Where there's a net, there's a predator and there's prey. Right, and yeah. we have built all around the globe, we have built a web and a net. And it's really, as I said earlier about the, the news, it's just a question of pulling it tight. So, you know, what do you do about that? Uh, I think there's a lot of things you can do. You can make practical solutions, like Start Page, which we'll be talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make political solutions, vote for people who don't follow this sort of thing, or go to protest meetings, or, or go to board meetings and try to get things changed. And I think fundamentally, though, that, that given that it's a spiritual battle, there really is only a, a spiritual answer. And that answer, as far as I'm concerned, is the saving blood of Jesus Christ. So, you know, when you feel a predator coming, and I've, I, talk, I travel all the time, I talk to people on the plane, of all different faiths and backgrounds and religions, and I don't, I try not to proselytize, I mean, I'm, you know, but, but when I talk to people, the one thing I can say to everybody, and they all go, uh-huh, is I say, don't you feel something coming for us? And they all go, Mm. And I say, don't you feel like all this yeah. technology is maybe going in a dark direction? And even the people who like they're on Facebook all day long, they're like, kind of, yeah, I know what you mean. And then I say, well, that thing that's coming for us wants to eat us. Mm -hmm. It wants to eat humanity. And it wants to eat you. And the only way that you're going to be able to escape it is not going to be all the survival food in the world. I totally believe in that. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be arming yourself to the teeth. It's not going to be any of that. It, it really is the, the only thing that's going to save you is going to be getting on your knees and saying, Lord, just cover me in your blood because that's what protects me. Right, because we see this. Uh, I did a speech. Well, I didn't do a speech. Alex did a speech that I had a chance to film. He goes out from this audience. He says, you know, they're using the book of Revelations as an instruction manual. I'm the powers, you, the powers that are. be, you know, you know, the, the chips and all the other tracking and so forth. Just because you made a great point, and we'll move on to your, your start page news here. But, you know, uh, you know, a thousand years ago, back, you know, even before that when the Bible was written, you know, and people were trying to figure out, you know, how, how is all this going to happen? You know, uh, all these great prophets and, right. and priests, and you know, trying to figure out, you know, how can this possibly be implemented? But now we see uh, the smart shopper cards, the RFID chips, right. uh, the cashless society. They don't want to use cash. You know, I see the the Mastercard commercials or whatever. Oh. The person goes to pay with cash and they buy stuff. Because you know, they're trying to demonize cash. They're trying to make cash uncool, and they're trying to make this hip. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you, um, I'm, I'm sure you talked about it, when Regina Dugan of DARPA, who is now working for Google as the mm -hmm. head of Motorola, yeah. when she demoed that electronic tattoo, oh, yes. and, and she said in that talk, she said, well, it's kind of hard to get young people to wear a wristwatch. But, but we can get them to wear, a, we tattoo. Can get them to wear a tattoo. Was she also if, talking about? For no about other reason than it's going to upset their parents. Right. And so she's drawing on the cool, the hip, the rebellion 
to make people trackable. Yes. You would think if you're gonna if you're gonna be young and you're gonna rebel, you're gonna rebel against the tracking, but they're trying to make it cool and hip so that you embrace it. It's trendy. Now mm -hmm. I was gonna ask you, was that the same one who went to link your phone to a pill that was swallowed? Yes. Yes. You got yes. it. Absolutely. So right as soon as she demos the electronic tattoo on, on her arm, she then says, Oh, but you know, the, the next step is you swallow your authentication and she holds out this pill. And I felt like I was looking at Jack and the Beanstalk, like what? Yes. And and you, you swallow the pill, and it goes through your body. It, it reacts with the acids in your stomach to create a an electronic signal, an electrical impulse. Why would um, anybody impulse. do that? And the th the phrase that she said is, "Your arms become antennas, and your hands become alligator clips, and everything you touch is is basically interacting." with this number so your whole you're not just transmitting a number with your phone mm -hmm. your whole body from your face to your hands every piece of your flesh is transmitting this number it's like the matrix Woo! it's crazy that is crazy now i know we have yeah. covered a lot of things <laughs> but we have some breaking news out of start page that we're right. debuting get, right uh, here good news i gotta, I gotta keep news. coming back to the good news jakari because right. otherwise i get discouraged all right so our good news is um, today, breaking news, and this is the first place we've revealed this. Oh, thank you. Is that StartPage and Ixquick, the world's most private search engines, have just implemented the most secure form of encryption technology available today. And this is uh, a first. There's no other private search engine that is using this. And in order to understand it, it's actually called Perfect Forward Secrecy. And secrecy. I thought, you, I thought you'd secrecy. like that name. Okay. I thought you'd like that. So the way it works is, uh, we since the TSA scandal broke, and Edward Snowden, my hero, NSA, um, NSA, uh, NSA, yeah, TSA's got They're, his own got scandals. Their own scandals <laughs> to worry about. Yeah, since the NSA scandal broke, and Ed Snowden uh, revealed to us how much it's it's kind of like a vacuum cleaner over there at the NSA. They're just scarfing up all our information. That created a, a new concern about encryption. So the way encryption works is, if I'm going to send a message to you. I encrypt the message, you decrypt the message, and everybody in between just sees gobbledygook except mm -hmm. for you and me. So if the NSA were to intercept an encrypted message, they would just get a bunch of junk. Well, what they're doing with that is they're storing all the bunch of encrypted junk in hopes that they will later be able to get the, the, the key mm -hmm. in order to decrypt it. Well, if they get that key, here's the part that is the security issue. If they get the key for one of the messages, they get the key for all of them. Wow. So what, what um, our new system, Perfect Forward Secrecy, does is instead of creating one key for every single message over weeks and months and years, is we create a new key for every that gets sent. And you can liken it, probably the best way to understand this is if I have a skeleton key or a master key for a building and I'm mm -hmm. the janitor, I can take that key and I can go to any single door in the building and I can pop open everything. Mm -hmm. That's what an encryption key is like. Very hard to get a hold of. You'd have to hit the janitor over the head to right. get it, but once you had it, then you could do whatever you wanted. And in the case of encryption, it's even harder than hitting the janitor over the head. You would have to do you know, some kind of an attack. You would have to um, use a whole lot of computing resources to brute force it open, which could take months, years. It could take a long time. But once you got it, then it kind of unlocks everything. So what we've done is understanding this in light of the fact that they're capturing everything, mm -hmm. is we've switched over to, to the perfect forward secrecy. <clears throat> and what it is like is instead of the master key, it's like every single lock to every single room and every file cabinet has its own individual lock and key. So it provides an additional layer of security. And StartPage, of course, was the first search engine to ever implement SSL encryption in the first place. Back in 2011, we made it the default. So we've been encrypting your searches all along. And the good news is that Edward Snowden, you know, when these revelations broke, we were all like, oh my gosh, has the NSA broken encryption? Can they read yeah. SSL encryption? Mm -hmm. And so the whole security community, we were all leaning forward. What's he going to tell us? Because if the NSA had broken it, he would have told us. Mm -hmm. And what I love about it is actually, we can see the quote here. He actually says, encryption works. And when I read that, I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So encryption works, properly implemented. I'm quoting Edward Snowden here. Mm -hmm. Properly implemented strong crypto systems are one of the few things that you can rely on. So there's the key. And then he goes on, and we should know this other part, too. Endpoint security is so terrifically weak that the NSA can find ways around it. Now, that's not start page. That's your laptop. That's your PC. And so the way, if the NSA wants to figure out what you're doing online, they're not going to try to break the encryption. 
I mean, that's like years worth of effort, and all they get is your one message, so right. why bother? Mm -hmm. What they would instead do is do an attack against you to compromise your personal computer. And then everything you do on the computer, if you're going to read the message, you have to decrypt it first. Mm -hmm. And once it's decrypted, they're just sitting on your computer watching everything. So the solution to that is, is really going to have to be people being much more careful about not visiting malware and phishing sites and mm -hmm. the seamier underside of the internet. And you kind of know when you're there, you know, you right. can pop ups and creepy stuff. That's a bad sign. Mm -hmm. um, and also to have an up to date virus checking program and run it all the time. Like every time you think of it, just go click, run, and, and have it updated regularly so that if there is a virus on there, you can get rid of it. And, you know, ultimately, we may wind up with, you know, the, the computer for the private stuff we do and then the other computer. Yeah, for everything know. else. Yeah. It, it may come down to that. But um, the other thing, I, I would say Linux is a much more secure operating system than Internet Explorer, for example. Okay. Uh, we know that Microsoft, which makes Internet Explorer and the Windows operating system, we know that they're in bed with the NSA. They were yeah, they're in the, the PRISM scandal. They are part of the PRISM scandal. Uh, a lot of stuff coming up about what they may or may not have shared or access that they've provided to even people's operating systems and computers. And not to mention they have the new Xbox that, you know, tracks you what, you, what you do. It's so advanced it can tell if you're enjoying the game. Huh? And who looks at that and goes, yeah, can't those, those wait to get sold it. Out. They're sold oh out at GameStop. They're sold well, out at GameStop. And, and that means we just need to work harder to educate people. And let me tell you the other thing. We need to make, like, the private Xbox. Because... People put up with the tracking because they want the Xbox. It's mm. the same when you when you perform a search on Bing or Google or Yahoo, you're putting up with the tracking not because you're like, oh yeah, I don't care if those guys know. No, you want the search results. Right. So that's why with StartPage, we we actually got actual Google results because people wanted them. Mm -hmm. And you know, if it's a toss up, my privacy, Google results, my privacy, Google results. A lot of people go, Google results. Mm -hmm. You know, my privacy, Xbox. A lot of people go. Xbox. Xbox. So the solution to that, I think, is that those of us with, with technological skills and security backgrounds who care about these things, people who run businesses, people who write software, we need to be creating sort of almost like an alternative whole world. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, like we've got StartPage and Nixquick, the alternative search engine. We're coming out with StartMail at startmail.com, which will be the alternative to you know, Yahoo Mail and, and Gmail and all those services. But we need that for everything. You know, video games. Cable yes, companies, everything. phones, you know, uh, operating systems and, and browsers and, you know, everything. And the list even goes on beyond that. You know, you look at, at supermarket cards. Can I celebrate one more victory with you? Oh, please. All right. So my very first protest ever was in 2002. And it was right here in Texas. It was at the Dallas Albertsons. And we protested their introduction of frequent shopper cards. I have one with a fake name. I'll throw it out there. If you, have you ever used a credit card with it or an ATM no. card? Cash. Only cash. cash. Well, you're one of the rare, so you're one of the, real, the rare well, ones. I, I, I don't want to reveal so too much. So pitch it every once in a Recycle that mm -hmm. periodically. But here's the good news. You don't need it at Albertsons anymore. You don't need it at Acme, Albertsons, Osco, Shaw's, and there's one other one. But for all of those chains owned by Albertsons, just this last month, decided to scrap the cards. So 10 years later, it took 10 years, yes. but we even scored a victory there. And I think one of the reasons we're scoring these, these awesome victories really is due to Ed Snowden. You know, the tide's turned. Now the privacy story is not buried on page 15, and mm -hmm. nobody knows. It's, it's front page. Like, oh, yeah. the story that just, that just came out from the ACLU about the tracking of the driver's license, or the license plates. Mm -hmm. I could have talked about that two years ago, and it would have been, you know, nobody would have even noticed. Right. But now it was the front page story on USA Today. And there's another big story out of Colorado. They're, they now license, or they're considering licensing bounty hunters to go shoot drones. I don't think they're going to do too well, but, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's it got the to the climate. point where people, yeah, people are interested in talking about these the things. The climate. It's like everybody now is kind of waking up and smelling the coffee that's been mm -hmm. brewing all around us for the last 10 years. And I'm actually optimistic. I've been doing this since 1999. I've been at this for 14 years. And this is the first time that I really feel like all those years I spent shouting from the rooftops into the wind mm -hmm. that people are actually now hearing it and waking up. Oh, yes. And I think it's, it's part of a couple things. It's, it's, it's we feel the oppressive hand of government violating our, our constitutional rights and our right. Fourth Amendment rights. I think it's also the other thing I was talking about. We kind of feel something, something's just not right. We're feeling uneasy. Something dark is coming. Uh, I, I think it's also we're feeling empowered because we've got these tools. 
So it really is going to be, I think, um, you know, a, 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 an informational arms race that we're going to have to use these awesome tools at our disposal that let all of the viewing audience see this conversation. Yes. We have the First Amendment right to have this conversation. Both of us get to go home tonight and not be worried about a black sedan disappearing us or assassinating us because we dared to speak out. So while we still have our First Amendment liberties of the press and speech, and while we still have the tools through which to organize and speak, this is the moment. And I think it's gonna be a, a brief blip in history. I think that this moment is not gonna last very long. And we have to take advantage of it. Because what's coming next, and of course you know this better than anyone because you're here with InfoWars, and yeah. Alex gets this, and uh, probably more than anybody, is they are putting the pieces in place to shut down the internet. Oh, yeah. To shut down our travel, to shut down our ability to, to gather and speak to one another. And all those little pieces are marching into place. So during this period right now, every single person hearing this interview has the ability to pick up the phone and call 50 other people all over the country and say, turn on, you know, turn on the, pull up this browser, go, go watch this interview. Mm -hmm. And in five or 10 years, you may not have that ability. So now's the time. Now is the and time. And I encourage people, you know, watch this show every day. Listen to what Alex has to say. Yeah, listen Tune to my radio some good show. Things to say. No, really. There, there are people out there who are telling you the truth and, and telling you what to, what to look for. And I don't know how much longer we'll be able to do it. That's exactly so, right. Now, Ms. Albrecht, we're about to the end of our interview. So if you give us our final thoughts, if you can look in that camera right there, <coughs> and just tell us what they need to know about Catherine Albrecht and what they need to know about the security and privacy of our nation. Terrific. So I, my website is kmashow.com, or just my name, katherinealbrecht.com. If you are using the Internet, and that's pretty much everybody out there, you should be using startpage.com as your, your browser. You can make it your home page. Uh, we've done a, a special video showing you how to do that. Uh, you can also add it to your browser, so it's in the upper right-hand corner, the little pull-down menu up there, so you can always have it available. And I, I think the key thing, pull out of Yahoo, Google, Bing, all the big services, all the PRISM services, find alternatives and um, you know, just, just keep staying informed. All right, yeah. Dr. Catherine Albert, thank you so much for coming in. We definitely appreciate you. And I believe you do have some other things scheduled for this evening. I do, I'm excited. I'm going to Brave New Books in uh, Austin on Guadalupe Parkway, right across from the UT Austin campus to celebrate. We've got a big party planned tonight. Andrea Hernandez is gonna be there. And we're going to be uh, singing for She's a Jolly Good Fellow at the end of that tracking program. So lots of fun tonight. And I hope the folks in Austin are able to turn out and join us. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Jakari. Now, Ms. Albrecht also has a short tutorial that's going to show you how to set up StartPage as your homepage and also how to set up the StartPage browser icon. So stay tuned right after this break. She's going to break down all that information for you. And after that, stay tuned for Gigi Arnetta and her interview with a Michael Hastings witness. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.